Hi everyone, this is Chris Kuhn with 3D Performance Tech. So, horsepower and torque are two of the most important but least understood concepts in the world of automotive performance. When I first got interested in cars, this stuff was really confusing to me. Anytime you would go to a manufacturer's website, you would see horsepower and torque values for a car. And anytime you looked at a dyno chart, you'd see two completely separate curves. When I'd ask people about this, they used to say things like, torque is all that matters, power is all that matters, or torque is your low end and power is your high end. Then one day, I stumbled upon this formula. Maybe you've seen it. Horsepower is equal to torque times RPM over 5252. But the formula didn't really help me. In fact, it just made things more confusing. If power and torque were completely separate things, how could there be a universal formula for changing one into the other? It didn't make sense, so I didn't experiment. I grabbed a random dyno chart off the internet, then picked a point on the torque curve. I plugged both the torque and RPM into the formula, and guess what? It lined up perfectly with the power curve. I tried a few more points and got the same result. At that point, I realized that you could hand me a dyno chart that showed only the torque, and I could use the formula to just draw in the power curve myself. It was starting to look like power and torque weren't separate things at all, but different versions of the same thing. I was kind of right. To get to the whole answer, we need to understand one basic thing. Being strong is not the same as being fast. That might sound obvious, but let's look at some examples anyway. Consider a cheap quadcopter. The blades spin really fast on these things, but you can still stop them with your finger. They're fast, but they're not strong. A windmill is the opposite. It may not be turning very quickly, but good luck stopping it with one finger. It's strong, but it's not fast. Now consider the propeller on an airplane. It spins really fast, and if you tried stopping it with your finger, the results wouldn't be pleasant. The propeller is both strong and fast. Finally, consider the second hand of a watch. It doesn't move very quickly, and it's not strong either. When we're trying to figure out how powerful something is, we need to consider both how strong it is and how fast it is. So it kind of makes sense that we'd use this formula. Power equals force times speed. When we're talking about things that spin, that force is called torque. You use torque every day. Whenever you open a jar of pickles or turn a screwdriver, you're applying torque. It's just twisting force. So we'll swap out the word force for the word torque. We haven't changed the formula here, we're just being more specific. So what units do we use to measure torque? In the US, we typically use foot-pounds. That might sound weird, but it's actually really simple. If we lift a one-pound box one foot into the air, the amount of force needed to do that is called one foot-pound. When we say something has one foot-pound of torque, we're just talking about that same amount of force being applied around an axis. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you. Just remember that torque, or twisting force, is measured in foot-pounds. Now let's talk about speed. There are plenty of ways to measure speed. We could use miles per hour, kilometers per second, feet per minute, or any number of other things. But those aren't too useful here. When we talk about how fast something is spinning, we typically use revolutions per minute or RPM. So we're going to swap out the word speed for RPM. Again, we haven't changed the formula, we're just being more specific. So power equals torque times RPM. Let's do the math for the examples we talked about. We had a quadcopter, a windmill, an airplane propeller, and the second hand of a watch. Just a quick note for the engineering geeks before we get started. I realize that there's gearing and other factors involved here, but we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. If you're calculating gear ratios and angular velocity in your head, you probably don't need to be watching this video, so just work with me here. Anyway, let's start with the quadcopter. Those blades were spinning really fast, say 800 RPM, but the torque was very low. Remember, you could stop the blades with your finger. Let's say the torque is 2 foot-pounds. Next, we'll do the windmill. The torque is really high, maybe 6,000 foot-pounds, but it's also turning really slowly. We'll say 10 revolutions per minute. Now we'll do the propeller on the airplane. It's spinning really fast, and it's also got a lot of torque. We'll plug some bigger numbers in for that. By the way, I'm just getting these numbers from quick internet searches. They may not be perfect, but they're good enough for what we're doing here. Lastly, we'll do the watch. If we're talking about the second hand, it's obviously going to spin at one revolution per minute. That's kind of the point of having it. The torque value is really low here, say one foot-pound. It's probably a little less than that, but again, we're just trying to keep this simple. So now we have all of our data. In order to figure out how much power we're making in each case, we're just going to multiply the torque by the speed. Again, we're just doing this to account for both how fast it is and how strong it is. So let's fill in those answers. As you can see, those power numbers are pretty big. They do work, but they're not convenient. What units are we even using here? There are units that we're using, but it's not obvious from just looking at this. So we need something that's maybe a little bit smaller and simpler to understand. So we're going to take the total power that we're making in each case, and we'll divide it by a horse. Or at least we'll divide it by how much power an average horse makes, which is about 5252. That'll give us horsepower. These values are a lot easier to understand. 
So, just to summarize, when we're trying to figure out how powerful something is, we start with this basic formula. Power equals force times speed. If we're talking about something that's spinning, we swap out the words force and speed for torque and RPM. This formula will give us our total power. Then we're just going to divide that number by how powerful the average horse is, which is 5252. And that gives us horsepower. So, let's bring an engine into this. We'll rev it up to 1600 RPM and measure how much torque it's making. Say it's 310 pound-feet. We'll write down both the engine speed and the amount of torque we're making. Now we'll rev the engine up to 1800 RPM and do that again. We'll repeat this all the way to the engine's red line, say 6000 RPM. Now we know how much torque we're making at various engine speeds. We can plot those points out on a graph, showing torque on the y-axis and RPM on the x-axis. At 1600 RPM, we're making 310 pound-feet of torque. We'll plot that on our graph. So, how much power are we making right now? Just like we did before, we're going to multiply our torque by our speed. And once again, we'll divide by 5252 to convert our units into horsepower. So you can see that we're making about 94 horsepower right now. We'll plot that point on the graph using the same scale we had over here for torque. We can repeat this process for all of other data points, and then project the intermediate values with a line. These won't be perfect, but they'll be good enough. So now you have your horsepower and torque curves for the engine. If this is still confusing, then just look at it this way. Torque at this end of the chart is happening slowly like a windmill, and torque at this end is happening quickly like an airplane propeller. The torque curve by itself doesn't show this. In order to account for the value of going fast, we take the torque curve, run it through our formula, and then drop it back on the chart and call it horsepower. Don't worry if this doesn't make complete sense right now. It's a hard concept to wrap your head around and it may take a little time. So hopefully this video at least got you pointed in the right direction. Whether you liked it or not, feel free to leave feedback in the comments section, and don't forget to check back for more videos at 3D Performance Tech.